recent question that came across my sort of DMs and also just general interactions with people was what laptop do you need for university and what sort of specs do you need, especially when doing a sort of media course or further into any other sort of university courses and what do you actually need to use your laptop on a daily basis. So in today's video, I'm gonna sort of explain the sort of choices behind my laptop and sort of give you a bit more of an insight into the things that you need. Let's jump into it. The decision to buy a laptop for university and the choices that are sort of presented to you can actually be quite daunting as there are a number of different options as well as different things like brands, specs, anything from using a Mac to a Windows computer, all of that sort of stuff. I'm gonna try and cover in today's video and sort of explore and expand upon my choices for my laptop and why I don't actually use a sort of Mac device. In all honesty, when I got my laptop, I actually bought it for my sixth form application. So when I was at sixth form, I needed a new laptop because I found myself needing to type stuff out more than actually writing stuff handwritten. Um, and I suffer from uh, partly dyslexia, so it's very, very difficult for me to write and I get really jumbled with sentences and stuff. So having a laptop at my disposal really, really did help me and it enabled me to do a number of things I wouldn't necessarily have been able to do normally. I then looked for a number of different devices, and either way ranging from integrated graphics to actual GPUs within the device, but I found that I would just need a sort of basic-ish laptop. I decided on getting this HP laptop right here. It's gonna be shining and shimmering in the light, I'm fully aware of that, but I bought this for around 500 pounds when I uh, purchased it, and it hasn't failed me so far. There have been a number of different things, like I've dinged up the sides, I've sort of scraped stuff, I've had to send it off for repair, but it's all been covered by HP, and I've really, really enjoyed using the device on a day-to-day -day basis. Well, what are the specs of this lovely device? Well, I've got an i5 processor, so it's 8th gen, so it is quite outdated now, obviously with us being on the new 12th gen SKU, but for a device, you're not really constrained by that sort of stuff. I'm using this for simple word processing and other things like that, so I'm not too fussed. It's got integrated graphics, so I'm not running any major applications or anything like that. And then it's also got only eight gigabytes of RAM, which isn't too much. It allows me for basic multitasking, but it's not gonna be pushing the boundaries of running Photoshop or anything like that. The majority of questions that I get asked is, is this good enough for university applications? And it completely depends on the course that you're doing and the sort of things that you want to be able to do on your own personal device or your laptop. Obviously, for me, it is a bit different because I've got this massive computer behind me. I've got loads of RAM. I've got a graphics card in there, all of that sort of stuff. So I'm not gonna be constrained by my actual laptop or my personal device because I'm gonna probably use this for most of the sort of legwork or the hard work that I'm gonna find myself doing. But if you're looking for a laptop for uni, you don't need to spend that much money. If you're doing a simple word processing, you only need to use it on Word, PowerPoint, maybe doing the old sort of thing here and there on Publisher. I would just recommend buying a standard laptop. If you wanna go down the Mac route, by all means, but to be honest, any Windows device is going to sort of sort you out. I wouldn't suggest going towards Chromebooks because Chromebooks are really, really cheap and tacky and don't really work for the things that you're going to be wanting to do. And if you want that Office 365 inclusion, it's much better to use it on a Windows device. Don't go too budget. You want to probably aim around spending £300 plus, maybe £350 plus to get a sort of decent entry level device but at the same time, you're not needing to pay thousands and thousands of pounds for a MacBook or a really high spec Asus laptop or something like that. Moving further into this point though, if you do a media degree or a film degree or anything that requires you to edit, what specs do you actually need in your device and how do you get around sort of instead of having to use a large machine like this? And well, the simple answer to that question is just look at the specs online, but also bear these sort of specs that I'm just gonna list in mind. You're gonna want anything higher than eight gigabytes of RAM, preferably 16 gigabytes if you're editing in something like Premiere Pro or anything like that, but eight to 16 gigabytes, that's completely fine. Anything higher is gonna really lead on to the expense side and it's not gonna actually help with performance too much. In terms of processor, you're probably wanting something like a four core or even higher than a four core, whether that be AMD or Intel. I personally love using AMD. I've got a Ryzen in here and it works exceptionally well. 
And then if you're thinking of encoding and rendering, you're gonna also want to think of using a GPU. So most devices will have integrated graphics, but if you sort of lead up into the higher end, you'll end up getting a GPU in your device. So that's a graphical processing unit. So that's the main thing that's gonna be driving your encoding, driving your video editing, all that sort of stuff. And also can be used for gaming if you'd like to game on a device like that. Be warned though, most laptops and laptop SKUs or however they like to be presented to you, aren't gonna be as powerful as big machines like this. If they say they have a i7 12th gen or whatever in it, that's gonna be the laptop version unless it's explicitly stated on the website. So it's not gonna be the same as something like I'm running here. The device that I've got here, actually put together when I sort of cost and evaluated for it, was near enough 800 to 900 pound. And then I bought this laptop for, like I say, about 500 pounds. So all in, I'm looking at about 1400 pound. So for this sort of setup, it's still far cheaper than a MacBook and have the flexibility of two devices. So do what you want with that information. If this video has helped you out and you liked me sort of explaining my laptop and the things that I've ended up purchasing, if you don't mind hitting like and also hitting subscribe to stay up to date with more content, that'd be greatly appreciated. Thank you ever so much for watching and fingers crossed I'll see you in the next video. That's been all from me. See ya.